can we welcome you to yet another webinar today is our fifth webinar uh, and we have dr lalita swaminathan with us she is here to talk to us about the management of chronic health conditions so the most common chronic health conditions like diabetes mellitus hypertension cholesterol uh, cardiovascular disease so which is very very common among elderly i should not say elderly in fact it's now common even above 45 50 so that is the sad scenario today so dr lalita swaminathan will talk about that uh, so just a quick snap about chronic health disease so what are these chronic health diseases are they as scary as we think about it or can we control it can we prevent it these are some questions that all of us have so i think uh, with doctor's talk we will be able to understand it and move about it so normally what do we see we see people you know suddenly there is a person who doesn't do any kind of an exercise they start exercising so when we ask them what happened they will say i took up a blood test and i found i was found to be diabetic so my doctor has advised me to go for a walk right until then until then they would have not even stepped out for a walk why why do we have to wait for something to happen and then go for it there is something called as prevention right every prevention is much better than cure so let's take such steps right from the beginning so they are not as scary as we think in fact once a chronic disease hits us we choose the right lifestyle you know only when we are a diabetic or hypertensive we say okay i'm going to reduce salt i'm going to reduce oil which was supposed to be normally followed right none of us do that we wait for something to happen and then we do it so chronic life health conditions are not as scary as it is thought to but we can definitely prevent it to an extent and yes if it has occurred we can take a uh, you know there are very easy steps that we can take in our everyday life that will help us in controlling the disease so today is uh, unfortunately what has happened is in the lifestyle changes and the genetic modifications and environmental changes have made diabetes and many many chronic health conditions has one a common uh, you know household problem these days and in fact it's very sad to note that india is the capital of diabetes mellitus so it's high time we all take a step towards chronic health conditions keep it under control and we should not let it master us instead we should master over it now with that we will move on to dr lalita swaminathan a small intro about her dr lalita is a family doctor who completed medical training at tanjavur medical college tamil nadu after graduating she did her internship in chandigarh general hospital and uh, once she got married her family moved to the us and she moved along with them and there she did her md in family medicine from an university in uh, arkanas where she received an award for exceptional physician patient relationship i have interacted with dr lalita she is such a sweetheart and the way she talks uh, i am 100% sure this is a reward of uh, you know exceptional patient uh, doctor relationship definitely suits her she has been practicing and teaching medicine at various hospitals for the last 14 years and she is recently a faculty doctor at the university of virginia where she has been practicing general medicine so her focus is on geriatrics and refugee care and she is currently undergoing a certification course in stress management and resilience training over to you dr alta thank you so much for uh having come over today and to give you the talk to us thank you sunanda welcome ma'am so yeah good evening to everybody thank you for uh, growing young uh, for giving this opportunity and uh, really uh, it's a pleasure to meet everyone through zoom um so i mean sunanda and uh, viji they have been doing great job with uh, uh, keeping you all healthy and uh, uh, it's a kudos to her for uh, um, you know doing the webinars making use of uh, zoom uh, online sessions uh, for uh, uh, i mean uh, educating everyone with uh, health awareness and uh, so i appreciate this opportunity to um, talk so i'm i'm going to I mean uh, i chose this uh, topic 
because I mean, chronic health condition is so common. Once you hit the age, I mean, there are some landmark uh, years, age, we say like 40 years. Once we touch 40, I mean, everything starts knocking in. Uh, so at least uh, the chronic health, as Sunanda gave a really nice uh, intro to chronic health problems. So um, it, it's so common that at least one chronic health condition is, uh, I mean, al almost every, uh, every person we see, like three people we see, two of them are going to have a chronic health condition. So the topic will focus on what is chronic health problem? Why do we get it? What can you do to take care of it? So the biggest thing is, I mean, a doctor is somebody who is going to, being a family doctor, I can say, I mean, uh, uh, so the, what I do is um, I give uh, the tools for you to manage. Uh, so the, to my patients, I mean, I just give the tool, what can you do to take care of your health? So it's mainly in your hands to take care of your health. So uh, the more you are aware about why you are getting it, what can you do to manage it or prevent it? It's going to help a, a whole lot. So um, it's going to, I mean, I, I just chose, there are so many chronic health conditions. Some of them are more common in uh, above 45, 50. Uh, I don't want to take just elderly, but um, uh, once you hit that 40, 45, you're uh, sl slowly starting to see uh, some chronic health condition, which is uh, um, creeping up. So uh, just to be aware, uh, we can talk a lot about every condition, but then I'm just choosing three main topics um, and then uh, any, I mean, feel free to ask any questions um, in between if you just, uh, Sunanda, I mean, can we, can they just raise a hand or uh, if you can yes, just yes. Uh, pinpoint, yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, if they can, can raise hands and we can have the question session later. Yeah, I, I want this to be like an interactive session, but then I have some slides to present first. So in between, if there are a couple of uh, pertinent questions, I can answer during the presentation and then uh, you can make a note of uh, some of the other questions and we can answer at the end also. Um, so I want to share the slides. So um, are you, I just clicked the share screening. So are you able to see? Uh, yes, you have to click oh. the slideshow and it will be done. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. perfect, perfect. So any, I mean, if I am not audible, if uh, it's not clear, just if you raise the hand or if you chat uh, in the chat box, we can pause and uh, Vijay and Sunanda, if you can just uh, let me yes, know. Yes, yes, sure, we are here. Yeah. So we'll start, uh, it's, there are a few slides. Uh, I'll, uh, I mean, uh, based on like, uh, I mean, I'll just move uh, quickly. If I'm too fast, just let me know. Uh, let me start. So this is, uh, so I, I mean, chronic health condition, as I mentioned to you, it is, uh, as, and as uh, Sunanda talked about, it is so common. If I walk downstairs in my community where the growing young men are sitting downstairs at six o'clock, so elderly people, I mean, group of men or group of women are sitting and chatting downstairs. If I see 10 of them, it is so common that seven of them or eight of them are going to have at least one chronic health problem. So what is a chronic health condition? So chronic health condition or chronic disease, it is anything that is any health condition which is going to last more than a year and it requires chronic I mean, continued medical attention. So medical attention meaning it does, it's not necessarily medicine, but you need lifestyle changes for that. You need medicine for that. You need lifestyle changes in the sense it's a diet or exercise, um, those type of uh, conditions. In contrast, what is not a chronic health condition? So if you're getting a tooth pain, tooth pain is going to last till you take care of the tooth. So it could be a, a dental caries or it could be a root abscess. Uh, you take care of it, it's going to go away. Same thing if you get um, COVID. So, so I mean, uh, I'm really thankful that we all made it through this pandemic and uh, we are able to uh, have a conversation here. And if even the COVID, it is an acute condition, we say it is a short term problem or a temporary problem. 
Uh, so pneumonia is a temporary problem. It is going to go away with antibiotics. Common cold is a temporary problem. And uh, chronic condition in the other hand, it is going to stay with you. So once, uh, uh, even though we don't need to be worry, worried about it, but then we have to pay some attention to our health uh, so that uh, it is controlled or maintained. So that's a chronic disease or chronic health problem. As I told you, 10, I mean, if I meet 10 older adults uh, or 10 60 plus senior citizens, seven or eight of them are going to have at least one chronic health problem. So it is so common. So nobody is alone in that. So occasionally one or two, they are bestowed with the best genetics or a very good healthy lifestyle. Maybe the rishis in Himalayas, I mean, we don't know. Some of them may not have a chronic health problems. A health problem, but most of us, we will end up with just at least one or two health problems. Two out of every three senior citizens, as I told you, it's not just me telling you, but even the union ministry, uh, they did a study uh, and uh, they released a, uh, a report in uh, 2020. Uh, and uh, they said two out of every three senior citizens, they have one chronic health disease. So I'm choosing like top five common health problems in older adults. We'll just see what are they. I think many of you can guess and uh, it's first one, high blood pressure. It's very, very common. I, I, I see like, I mean, I, I commonly say like sister diseases. So if one is there, the other one is going to be there and the third one is going to be there. So the first three is going to be the top, the top three, it's going to be those three sisters, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high blood sugar or diabetes. If diabetes comes, high blood pressure comes, high cholesterol comes. So those are like three sisters uh, not uh, who are inseparable. And some, some people I mean they're lucky, they just get high blood pressure or they just have high cholesterol, they don't have diabetes. So it can be either one or just two or three diseases. Uh, if uh, if uh, they're not that lucky with the genes, they can have all three diseases. Many patients I see, they have all three, uh, diabetes, cholesterol, blood pressure together. Other common health problems in older adults, arthritis, Arthritis, I mean, it doesn't need to be like scary, like rheumatoid arthritis, but osteoarthritis, which is uh, wear and tear arthritis, like joint problem because of uh, wear and tear or overusage. Uh, arthritis causes joint pain, mainly. Heart disease, because of the three sisters, I can say like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, I mean, all of that can contribute to heart disease. Heart disease can be heart attack problems or I mean, related to heart attack or heart failure. Other common conditions, which are also chronic disease, I mean, I'm not touching in detail about all of them, but uh, uh, I just want to re I mean, touch on just a few of them. Um, once you're 65, I mean, the USPSTF, which is the US Preventative Task Force, I mean, it is a guideline, it gives guidelines for practice in US. And what they say is older adults, there it's 65 plus, I mean, you can say senior citizens, better to get one vision check, vision screening, I mean, even if you don't have any vision problems, many of us start getting, I mean, I'm 45, now I'm starting to get near vision problems. So everyone is starting slowly, your eyes uh, shows the aging faster. So uh, you will get vision uh, screening done uh, earlier if you get some symptoms. Even if you don't have symptoms, get your eyes checked for, um, vision as well as uh, pressure, eye pressure, uh, make sure I mean, you don't have cataracts. So over 65, at least uh, once every few years, it's important to get an eye checkup. If you have diabetes, it's very important to have an eye checkup once every year for, uh, to make sure that you don't have diabetic retinopathy. So they'll do like a dilated eye checkup. So they'll put, they, they'll dilate the eyes and then they'll check uh, to make sure that you don't have retinopathy. And hearing loss, so it's a very common problem. How many of us see, see our husbands have selective hearing loss for ladies. Uh, we, we see that many of the husbands, they choose not to listen to you. That's a common problem. But then uh, many, many adults, mean we start getting hearing just like near vision develops when you're over 45. 
hearing also I mean slowly starts to decrease once you start aging. So there is an interesting study from Johns Hopkins. They, they followed about 700 adults, 680 adults over 12 years. And uh, they saw the effect of hearing loss and memory. So what they saw is mild hearing loss. It can double your risk of dementia. So the, prob the dementia problem or memory problem can be doubled if you have even mild hearing loss. Same thing if you have moderate hearing loss that can be tested with audiometry, ENT doctor can do it. So if you have moderate hearing loss, your risk for getting dementia is three times, like it's threefold more than normal adult, normal without hearing loss. Same thing if you have severe hearing loss, the risk for dementia is fivefold more than normal population. So even though we like to pretend that we are hearing normally, many older adults do that till the point that they are not able to hear. You see them using one phone over, I mean, they're preferring one year, one year over the other, or they're not hearing properly when uh, if there are a group of people talking in a group. I mean, those are the signs to know that uh, you're not, your vision, your hearing is decreased. So yeah, when, when, the, when four or five people are talking, you're not able to make sense. You see that uh, the TV is so loud, uh, even from outside, you can hear. So that is a sign that you're getting hearing loss. Don't, don't be shy to get a hearing test done. Don't be shy to get a hearing aid because if you don't want dementia, better to take care of your hearing. So that's about hearing loss. Dementia is a crack. I mean, uh, some adults, I mean, especially in Western countries, it's a lot more. I mean, once you get other, I mean, diabetes or stroke, I mean, uh, there is a risk for dementia or memory problem. Uh, as you old, get older, I mean, sleep problems, mood problems, those are like mental health uh, conditions which can affect uh, older adults. Stroke, cancer, uh, osteoporosis is other one like where your bones can become brittle and you can get fractures because of that. So that's, uh, the, those are the other common chronic diseases. Why do you get health problem like chronic, chronic health problem? Why can't you be like the Rishi who lives in Himalayas without any uh, health problem? Why cannot you be like that? So many times we are, uh, I mean, uh, our genes or hereditary reasons, I mean, we have, uh, we have carried the genes from older, from our ancestors. Um, they have not just uh, transmitted the, their wealth, but also the health. So uh, it is, uh, so, I mean, uh, uh, if, uh, if your father has high blood pressure, your mother has high blood pressure, then your, the chances for you to get high blood pressure is high. Same thing with diabetes. Same thing with arthritis, osteoarthritis. Only some are prone to get osteoarthritis because of this hereditary factors. Not just, this is not the only reason, but I'm saying it's one of the common reasons to get why you get high cholesterol. Some of them may be eating a lot of fatty food, but Cholesterol is perfectly fine, but uh, yours is not. You're very picky, but still your cholesterol is very high. The reason is you're, you're more prone to get that uh, high cholesterol. So that's mainly because of the hereditary problem. Um, sorry, my slide is moving ahead of me. <laughs> so lifestyle factors, so diet and activity, I mean, uh, uh, smoking, alcohol, those are uh, some of the reasons why you can get. Uh, some are sedentary. I mean, uh, our ancestors, I mean, they have not been that sedentary, but with uh, the current life situation, uh, we get everything by uh, I mean, operation of a switch. So uh, it, we are more prone to get uh, the, some of the diseases that uh, our uh, um, father or mother, I mean, they didn't get those smoking and alcohol, environmental factors, like we are living in, I mean, uh, our soil is polluted, air is polluted, water is polluted. So that has an impact on the health. Same thing with uh, high pressure jobs, 
I mean, only the other day I was talking with uh, my uh, cousin, like, I mean, our uh, life is not that easy, like, uh, what our, even though every generation, they have faced their own struggles, but then with uh, technology improving, and then we have uh, so many things, we have a lot of information overload, the uh, job stress is much, much higher than uh, what our forefathers face. So the, I mean, uh, those are some of the reasons for getting chronic health problem. Some other like autoimmunity, like your own body becoming uh, reactive to the uh, cells in the body. I mean, it can cause thyroid problems or diabetes. It can be because of autoimmune reason. So that uh, those can uh, be the reasons for the chronic health problem as well. What can you do? This is like an overall picture before we go into those three major uh, chronic health problems. So what can you do? As I told you, your health is in your hands. So even visiting a doctor periodically, I mean, it is, uh, even though you feel perfectly normal, that's the thing, like you, many of these diseases, uh, diabetes or high blood pressure or cholesterol, you don't get symptoms until, I mean, it is uh, late in the, I mean, un unless the uh, disease is, uh, it has been there for a while in our system. So, I mean, the periodic doctor visits, it is very important to, um, just identify even the chronic diseases. So, I mean, generally we say uh, keep those landmark years, like 40 years, uh, probably better to, uh, with your birthday, it's better to go ahead and get a health checkup. And uh, usually, I mean, we say like, uh, keep, the, keep your birthday time uh, as a reminder for yourself to get a, a regular doctor visit. So mainly at least get your weight checked, your blood pressure checked, uh, make sure that uh, once you hit 40, I mean, uh, make sure that you don't have uh, diabetes, uh, make sure that you don't have high cholesterol and uh, make sure that uh, there is uh, any other like vision problem, those type of uh, things, just get a quick I mean, evaluation by the doctor. Many companies offer master health uh, checkup. Many of the checkups that's available here in India, some of them, they don't have perfect evidence for us to do it. Like for example, you don't need to get a ultrasound abdomen for a routine thing. So you don't need to get that, but a uh, little bit overdue they do in some of the hospitals. So mainly I would say blood pressure check, weight check, uh, a sugar checkup and cholesterol checkup. Uh, once you hit, once you know if you have your uh, blood pressure problem, it is better to get your kidney function tested. Once you know you have cholesterol problem, it's better to get your liver function tested, your urine checkup. So those are some of the big things. And uh, for ladies, mammogram can be done once you turn 40. Uh, even in US, we used to do it once you turn 40, but now we are doing it once uh, because so many of them are getting overdiagnosed and that creates a lot of anxiety. But now they're saying once you hit 50, it is better to do. But with India's condition, what I'm seeing is, I mean, environmentally, so much, so many pollution and other factors are there. I'm seeing a lot more breast cancer patients, uh, even without any hereditary reasons or family history or reasons. So it's better to start at age 40 that's what i would say at least one mammogram around the age 40 so periodic doctor visit and then once you know that you have a, a doctor visit I mean, uh, once you know that you have a chronic health problem do self some self monitoring so as i mentioned to you about weight blood pressure those things Lifestyle changes, even if you don't have, as uh, Sunanda was talking about, I mean, just prevention is better than uh, even finding out uh, that you have a chronic health problem. So lifestyle change, like I mean, uh, healthy diet and uh, active, uh, physically active, being, uh, I mean, starting up with an aerobic uh, weight bearing exercise, 20 to 30 minutes a day, it's going to be helpful in the long run. Medication, if you're on medicine, make sure that you're going to be taking it uh, every day get lab visits every uh, few months according to what problem you have. So those are some of the things. So I want to talk about uh, uh, high blood pressure. So that's that's the first uh, chronic health problem. Uh, why, before I start doing that, any question uh, that I, I'm not able to see the chat box uh, here. Um, one second, let me see. 
anything sunanda that uh, you see no 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 far, so far no questions on the chat box okay. uh, they are more comfortable in raising hands and questioning so maybe we can have yeah. a conversation yeah. yeah that is good so before i start I mean uh, give me idea sunanda I, i have a very short quiz of okay. high blood pressure before we talk about it it's just three small three short questions most of us will know nothing uh, uh, you, major, but you then, can ask the question uh, whoever knows they can unmute themselves and they can tell me sure that okay. is great yeah. so we'll start that so first question you should not exercise if you have high blood pressure true or false 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 false, false. great false. so actually exercise helps with high blood pressure so you should you should exercise so your blood pressure number stays the same throughout the day true no. or false no no false, false. Excellent. I don't think I need to talk any. Yeah, everyone further. is so clear already. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So blood blood pressure is a variable number. So every time some people mean uh, complain to me. Oh my God, this machine is not correct because it shows one forty one time, one forty five one time, one twenty. So it is because your blood pressure is it varies. It is a variable number, just like your pulse. So whenever you are eating. if you are eating and then immediately checking your blood pressure will be high if you are drinking coffee and checking blood pressure caffeine can increase blood pressure uh, up to 10 mm mercury you smoke a cigarette or chew tobacco and check blood pressure that 30 minutes after smoking your blood pressure can go really high uh, for about 30 to 60 minutes so the next one question 3 yes can always not always yeah not always yeah false false right yes false so you can always feel symptoms always i can feel it when my blood pressure goes up we see, we hear that commonly but actually not so your your blood pressure can be 170 180 but you feel perfectly normal so that's the most common so what i want to just uh, brush about like what is high blood pressure we keep hearing i mean uh, two numbers right i mean 120 over 80 150 over 90 uh, so those type of things so actually what it is is uh, the higher number the top number is called systolic it's the pressure the so the heart is pumping and heart is pumping and the, uh, there is the blood vessel it is pumping blood into the blood vessel aorta and other blood vessels goes out of the heart so when the heart is pumping the pressure that is there on the blood vessel that is receiving the blood it is systolic blood pressure so when the when the heart is in the pumping action the heart has two actions pump and then relax when it's relaxing pump blood goes into the heart when it pumps it pushes the blood out of the heart when it relaxes blood goes into the heart right so when it is pumping the blood is pushed out of the heart and whatever pressure is there on the blood vessel which is receiving the blood it is called systolic now the heart is relaxing whatever pressure is there on the blood vessel that is diastolic or the lower number so when the heart is pumping the pressure is going to be high when the heart is relaxing and the blood is draining into the heart the pressure on that blood vessel is going to be low that's why the diastolic blood pressure is low so 120 over 80 120 mm is the pressure that is there on the heart when your heart is pumping and then when the heart is relaxing or when the heart is pumping means when it's contracting and then when it's relaxing the heart is going to be the blood the blood vessel has a pressure of 80 mm which is your diastolic blood pressure so what is high blood pressure or elevated blood pressure or hypertension so lot of different numbers I mean i have put one number there based on who's guidelines but uh, every association like american heart association uh, jnc which is a, a kidney association so every every association has their own guidelines but we are just taking one rough number general rule for a normal adult so you can you can answer this question too like at what age would you check blood pressure regularly so for an adult will should we wait till you become 40 should we start checking at 18 should we ch start checking when you are uh, 
or 45. So what, what do you think? Mostly 40. Any guesses? Yeah, Chandra Aunty, 40. 45 and above. 40, 45 and above. So the actual answer is once you turn 18, when you're an adult. Wow. Yes. Wow, 18 is it? Because of the present day lifestyle, even pediatric uh, doctors have. Protected. Pediatric, we have to check. Exactly. Exactly. When, but now the, the parameters are pre to younger age, like right. 18 or 20. At so, least in, in the US, in our clinics, when they turn three, we start checking blood pressure with any whistle. So, they come, they come to the hospital or clinic for anything, like common cold or any problem, when they start becoming three, we start checking blood pressure. And they have this tiny, small cuff, which we use for the children. Um, and especially when, because we see so many children are overweight or obese, it is important to uh, check blood pressure even when they are younger. So, but the important thing about checking blood pressure for children is you have to use the right cuff. So the cuff that we use for measuring, it has to be appropriate for their size. If you use an adult size, the blood pressure, you, you cannot even read blood pressure or it can be uh, erratic. So it, it has to be appropriate cuff size that has to be used for children. For adults, 18 plus, it's important for you to get um, periodic blood pressure checkup at least two to four years, I would say, until you hit that 40 uh, age landmark. And uh, once you know, I mean, periodically, if your blood pressure, so what is normal blood pressure? I mean, now the number I've given, just forget that. But normal blood pressure is always less than 120 systolic, less than 80 diastolic. So 120 over 80, that's what we say. I mean, less than 120 by 80, that's uh, normal blood pressure for an adult. Dr. With, Lalita, uh, that was Dr. Padma with us, actually. Oh, okay. So she gave her advice. Like <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Is there anything called the low blood pressure? Yeah. Yes. Blood pressure is yeah. You can you can feel free, Dr. Padma. You can talk also. Padma, ma'am, you are in mute. I just wanted to say hello to you, but you are of my daughter's age. I'm a retired doctor from government of India, just like uh, you are a physician for the federal government or whatever it is. It's happened. Uh -huh. Thank you. Great. Please continue. Good to, good to meet you. <laughs> yeah, uncle, do you have a question? Subramaniam, uncle? Yes, yes, yes. I have a question. Um, now, when you take the blood pressure, I have a very vague this thing of when you lie down, it shows the pressure less than what we sit and take the pressure, which I always do the fighting with the doctor. I don't, I don't want to give you pressure of sitting. You make me lie down and take. It makes a difference. Everybody, exactly. all of you, please see that. You lie down and take your pressure. I don't know. I want so to I'm going to on this on this talk. I mean, for the next few few slides, I'm going to uh, just touch base on what are the proper method of checking blood pressure. Uh -huh. Touch base. But uh, as you say, I mean, that's the physiology. Like uh, when you lie down, the pressure is uh, the lowest. When you sit up and lie, I mean, stand up, the pressure is going to be. Uh, it can. The, when you stand up, the pressure can drop. It's called postural drop. It's uh, common in older adults. So ideally, I mean, you don't need to necessarily lie down to check your blood pressure. So but even though to... you feel good about it, <laughs> you feel I good that your pressure is low. Because I tried it. So I tried it. Let me go through what are the guidelines. Let everybody for... try this and then we can discuss next time about this. Yeah. See, blood pressure is going to be low, but then that's not the main, uh, that's not how you have to check it. So also, we'll, we'll, we'll talk in detail. Yeah. One more, one so, more doubt about left hand and right hand. So one take... hand, any one hand, it's better when you are going to use a meter at home and check. Uh, it is important to use the same hand. So that's about it. It can be either left hand same. or right hand. Uh, when you are sometimes... keeping a log of your blood pressure. When you are keeping, when you are keeping a log of your blood pressure, how much it is, it's important that you measure your blood pressure on the same side. So it can be left side or right side. It doesn't matter. Some people can have minor differences between the arms. That's why it's important to stick with one side. So normal blood pressure less than 120 over 80. 
So between 120 and 130, it's borderline hypertension. Just like uh, we say pre-diabetes or borderline diabetes, same way, I mean, for blood pressure, 120 to 130 is borderline uh, high blood pressure. Over 130 is systolic, over uh, 90 diastolic, I mean, we call it a stage one blood pressure problem. And then over 140 by 90, we say it is stage two, where you definitely need. Uh, so this is this uh, grade is mainly for us, I mean, to decide on what type of treatment. It's also good for you to know. So if your blood pressure, you are 25, I mean, uh, or your son is 25, and uh, their uh, uh, blood pressure is constantly 130 over 90 or 130 over 89, it's important for them to know that they are already in borderline uh, blood pressure stage. So it's, it's important for them to do the lifestyle change at that time, time to prevent getting high blood pressure. Why? I mean, what happens in your heart when you have this high blood pressure? So I'm showing this uh, left side heart, which is pumping normally, no high blood pressure. The, everything is smooth. Heart is pumping normally. The blood flow to the blood vessel is normal. So there is not, uh, it, it's not a strained heart. When you see the right side, it's a, there is a strain on the um, heart. So the, the blood is not that, uh, it's not flowing that easily. And th there is a strain on the blood vessel. The heart is pumping harder against the blood pressure. Why do you get blood pressure? It's again a common, common question that we get. So non-modifiable risk factor, it's going to be the same for many of these chronic health problem. As I mentioned already, if your father or mother have a high blood pressure, when you get older because of other conditions, you can start getting it. When you have other uh, health problems like diabetes or kidney disease, you can start getting high blood pressure. Some of the things are modifiable like uh, modifiable risk factors which you can change to prevent the high blood pressure like eating unhealthy food, fried, fatty, high salt diet, I mean physical inactivity, obesity, I mean those, those things it can cause uh, tobacco, alcohol, um, sedentary lifestyle, those, uh, those things which can prevent, uh, when, when you take care of that, you can prevent from getting high blood pressure. Uh, symptoms, all the three diseases that I'm talking about, that's the common thing. As, I, as many of you uh, talked about, I mean, it's, a, uh, it's silent disease. Uh, mostly there are no symptoms, uh, no signs and symptoms of uh, blood pressure, uh, high blood pressure. Even when uh, your uh, blood pressure readings reach very high level, as I told you, I see so many patients walking in with 180 or 110 uh, lower number, uh, but still they don't have any symptoms. Sometimes, I mean, uh, you, you know, some of the common, when, when you get really high, uh, blood pressure can go really high. I mean, some people are prone to get, not everyone is asymptomatic. Some of them can develop symptoms also. Symptoms of high blood pressure, early morning headache, especially posterior headache, we say, like back of the head and neck. I mean, blurred vision, nausea, some of them can have uh, developed vomiting when you develop congestion, dizziness, nosebleeds. Nosebleeds, we see that commonly, but most of the time it's high, really high blood pressure. So when you check blood pressure, when you have nosebleeds, it's uh, very high, uh, very high blood pressure that can be. And uh, what are the effects of long-term I mean, uncontrolled? You keep saying, I don't have high blood pressure problem because I feel perfectly normal, but you silently, it's acting on your heart, it's acting on your blood vessels, it's acting on your uh, brain, uh, kidneys. So end result is most common problems with long-standing uncontrolled high blood pressure is stroke. So many times you hear, I mean, uh, hemorrhagic stroke where bleeding inside the brain, people are at the peak of the emotion and then they have a bleeding inside the brain. I mean, uh, that's when you start getting headache also, you may be starting to have headache. Uh, you may be starting to have bleeding inside the brain. I mean, it's a hemorrhagic stroke. Uh, when the blood vessel to the brain is affected, it can cause embolic stroke where it can uh, form clots in the blood vessels and clot can rupture and go inside and can develop stroke. Embolic stroke is much more common. Uh, heart disease, as I told you, the pressure, the blood, the heart is pumping against the high blood pressure for a long time. Imagine your uh, young son or a grandson going to the gym and working out. He's lifting weight. Many, we see many young, young people doing that, uh, even in the clubhouse where I live, I mean, many of them just uh, start lifting weights. 
the more you lift weights, you build your biceps, you build your abs, you build your uh, legs, right? Same way, I mean, heart is a muscle, heart is pumping so hard against this high blood pressure, heart becomes thick. So left ventricular hypertrophy, we say, the heart is thicker and stiffer when you uh, start developing this, I mean, uh, having this uncontrolled blood pressure for a long time. Uh, heart failure, diastolic heart failure, that's one of the common, most common reason for developing high blood pressure. Uh, the blood vessel from the, uh, because of high blood pressure, it is going to develop uh, blockages, uh, which can in turn lead to kidney disease. Same way, the blood vessel to the eyes uh, supplying the optic nerve can get affected because of high blood pressure. Optic neuropathy or vision problem can happen. I mean, even hypertension changes in the eye can be seen when uh, the eye doctor checks you in dilated eye uh, examination. How do you know, how do you, how can you take care of high blood pressure? Uh, managing, I mean, mainly it's uh, uh, taking medicine as prescribed by the doctor regularly, same time every day, that's the main thing. Don't miss, take four days a week, five days a week, that's not going to help for high blood pressure. Many people ask me, I mean, uh, my doctor has prescribed one medicine for high blood pressure. Should I take it for a month and then stop? Most of the time, it's a chronic health disease, right? Many times uh, you need that. Uh, so once you take the medicine and your blood pressure is good, normal, it doesn't mean that your the blood pressure problem has been cured. It has been controlled by the medicine. So it's important for you to keep taking the medicine regularly. Uh, once you're on medicine, are you going to be on the same medicine for lifelong? I mean, it's hard to say because, uh, uh, I mean, your things can change over time. Once you also do lifestyle changes, uh, once you start losing weight, uh, older adults, when they are approaching 75 plus 80, I mean, uh, when you automatically lose weight or you have done some diet changes, you don't have that teeth to eat. Uh, so there is not, uh, you're not, in, I mean, the intake is not as much. You don't have, you have some other chronic problem. You're not eating that well. So many conditions which can um, uh, decrease blood pressure over time automatically and uh, periodically that's why assessment by a doctor regularly is important so that they can adjust your blood pressure. So I think someone asked about low blood pressure, right? So low blood pressure when you when you are taking medicine, uh, when your blood pressure is lower than I mean uh, 100 systolic, sometimes 90 systolic. I mean excellent control of uh, blood pressure. You don't need to worry if your blood pressure is around 100 by 60 or 100 by 70. It is it is fine as long as you don't have symptoms. But 90 by 60 or even 100 by 60, if you're starting to feel symptoms like dizziness or tiredness, uh, then probably your blood pressure control is too tight and maybe you're having low blood pressure. Some people even other than hypertension, low blood pressure can be there in the, uh, as, a, as just like genetically you get, I mean, a hereditary wise, I mean, you're, you can get high blood pressure just like that. Some people can uh, have a tendency for low blood pressure. Uh, no, there are medicines if only if the low blood pressure is a really big problem, like symptomatically you are affected by it. Um, all right, so we'll just keep talking about high blood pressure. So medicine is one thing. The other lifestyle changes, usually three uh, mantras for any of the high, any of the chronic health problem, diet, physical activity, and medicine. So I'm going to re keep repeating that with every other chronic health problem also. So diet, exercise, medicine. So all three together you have to do. Um, so medicine, we talked about medicine and high blood pressure and then diet. So the biggest thing about diet in uh, and high blood pressure is salt. So low salt diet is generally recommended. Any adults, not, I mean 40 plus, 45 plus, a uh, little lower salt is going to be actually helpful. Many doctors say that, right? Low sodium diet. What is low sodium diet? Low sodium, I mean, uh, I say this uh, 2,500 milligram per day is sodium. So keep it less than 2,500 or even go as low as 2,000 milligram per day. You keep hearing that. So what can you do for it? One is uh, 
when you are cooking especially when you are when you are eating home cooked meal you have better control over the meal because you put what I mean you know what you are putting into the uh, uh, into the meal preparation so you know uh, how much of salt you are adding uh, for you to understand how much it is uh, the 25 2300 mg or 2500 mg is one teaspoon of table salt that you take so one teaspoon of table salt is 2300 to 2400 milligram of sodium per day so 2300 milligram of sodium so the guideline says low salt diet which keep it less around 2500 milligrams so if you if your total diet I mean whatever you are taking uh, has one full teaspoon of uh, table salt I mean it is 2000 milligram per day 2500 milligram per day so some people are more salt sensitive. Not everybody is salt sensitive. So, I mean, you have to see. So, for some, I mean, when you reduce the salt, the blood pressure comes down really nicely. For some, it may not. So, and it's not universal. But then, in general, when we say, when we talk about healthy diet, I mean, uh, keeping it to around uh, 2,500 milligram of sodium per day, it is important. So general guidelines is don't add excess salt. I mean, when you prepare a meal, if you feel that it's low in salt, just leave it. Don't add extra salt. Don't keep extra salt for uh, curd rice, thayar sadam. We usually take with salt. Don't if you if you prefer taking with salt, just skip it. Um, Papad or pickle, ketchup. Um, and, I mean, all of those uh, processed food, cheese has a lot of salt. Um, so better to avoid those processed food. Many times you don't have, I mean, all the snacks uh, that we get mixture or, I mean, uh, kara bundi, all of that. I mean, if you prepare with less salt, you know what you're taking, but uh, a little bit of that is okay. But then when you're buying store-bought, I mean, most of the time the salt, co salt content, you don't have much uh, control. So take very, very little just to satisfy your... Uh, in craving, but uh, better to avoid. Don't keep it at home. That's the main uh, solution. Rather than keeping it at home and then you try to take a little bit and then you just keep munching on it. So it's not going to help. Um, the other thing that's going to help with uh, diet wise is uh, eating lots of fruits and vegetable, more fresh fruits, vegetables, more uh, sabji, dal, uh, kutu and sambar. I mean, those are going to help. We call it as DASH diet, dietary approach to stop hypertension. Uh, a lot of things there. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a better to avoid like vatal, I mean, dried vegetable that we use. I mean, we put a lot of salt to preserve it. So anything that is preserved for a long time, we have to put salt as a preservative. So better to consume a little bit rather than a lot and less frequently. So not uh, every few, three times a week. It's not, it's not good. Uh, the third uh, mantra is increase physical activity. Uh, can uh, exercise actually help uh, reduce uh, blood pressure? Actually, it does. So aerobic exercise, it has been shown I mean, weight bearing exercise, we say, walking, brisk walking, bicycling, uh, jogging, in a swimming, those type of activity, I mean, it can, uh, treadmill or uh, elliptical, uh, all of those can uh, help in uh, reducing blood pressure. Uh, reducing it, it helps by reducing weight also. Every kilogram of weight you reduce, uh, the two millimeters of mercury, it's going to go down. It's systolic or uh, diastolic. So it does, it does really help with uh, controlling your uh, weight and in turn, it can control the blood pressure. So avoiding uh, other habits like tobacco, I mean, nicotine, I mean, uh, tobacco chewing or tobacco smoking, alcohol in excess, excessive uh, caffeine intake, I mean, uh, all of those can uh, affect the blood pressure. If you avoid those, uh, it can help with blood pressure control. And as I mentioned to you, uh, one important part of uh, managing blood pressure is keeping a check. One useful investment that you can do is to get a really good monitor, blood pressure monitor at home. So you go for a doctor visit, you sit there, I mean, just five minutes into your doctor visit, they are going to check blood pressure. They're using this old spigmo manometer. Someone is hearing it. It's very subjective. So some people may hear it. When I check with the spigmo manometer, I usually measure uh, the pulse, I mean, systolic, 
generally I check with the pulse. It's very accurate a way of uh, checking the systolic. But uh, when they hear it through the stethoscope, it can be subjective. They can start hearing it at 140 or I mean, so it's uh, in some ways, even in US, we don't uh, use the regular spigmo manometer. Uh, I still have the spigmo manometer in my room and check it whenever there is a doubt on systolic or when the machines give erratic readings. Um, but then it's uh, good to have a electronic good machine. Omron is one uh, really good machine. Nowadays we get uh, really good monitors uh, here as well. So uh, periodic monitoring of blood pressure at home. Uh, MayoClinic.org gives a uh, correct way how to check blood pressure at home. So if you just Google it, Mayo Clinic, and uh, uh, type in correct way. I have given some of the points here uh, in the next couple of slides. So we can see uh, what can you do to check blood pressure at home correctly. So this one, uh, oh, yeah. Hello? One yeah. moment. Wait, hello? Hello. Yeah, go ahead. In the chronic, go ahead. in the chronic disease, if we continue the medicine, it will create the acid, right? Now, uh -huh. it, will it affect the kidney? All right. Good. Good question. So every medicine you take, it is a chemical, right? Yes. So even if it is a herb, herbal medicine, Arjuna is one medicine that uh, that's uh, there in Ayurvedic uh, preparation. Arjuna is. Even though it, uh, it's coming from uh, uh, I mean a natural substance, it still has a chemical in it. Same way the allopathic medicines that you take, it has a chemical in it. So every medicine. I mean, not every medicine is going to be suitable for you. That's why the doctor has to adjust. But most of the medicines that are available, it is, uh, and uh, we start generally, like, I mean, uh, we use the pro protocol to start medicine. Like if your blood pressure is 140 over 90, I mean, what will be the first medicine to start? So there is a protocol that we follow and start. And most of these medicines, they don't have, I mean, uh, there are some common side effects that it can uh, have, but, uh, taking it for a long time, is it going to cause uh, any problem? So main thing what we are seeing is risk versus benefit. So what is the goodness that it is giving when it is compared to the risk from the medicine? If the benefit is more, it is better to go ahead and keep taking that medicine. Yes, so, ma'am. Uh, one question. Uh, if we take uh, the, we start the medicine, and it creates its effect in acid, we can subtract with the neutral food or anything, this uh, side effect exactly. together. Yeah. So many, many of the blood pressure medicine uh, affecting stomach acid, I, mean, ah, yes. I, have not seen, I have not seen many side effects with stomach acid for blood pressure medicines. There are some other medicine which can affect uh, stomach acids, as we yeah, say. The medicine for heart. The, yeah, some of the, I mean, one of the common medicine yes. which can affect uh, stomach acid is metformin. You take it for diabetes. The most common side effect of that is uh, irritation in the stomach. So stomach acid yes. can be irritated. So most of the time when you get stomach upset, because as I told you, every medicine is not going to be good for every person. Every person's body is different, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have acid problem or stomach acid is getting affected, better to take it with the meal. So generally when you have meal in the stomach, and you take medicine. So none of the blood pressure medicine you need to take when you are fasting. So you don't need to necessarily take with uh, in empty stomach. So better to take it with meal. So if breakfast is not enough, you're taking it with breakfast, but uh, it is causing some acid problem or stomach problem, then take it with a bigger meal, like a lunch. The key thing about uh, blood pressure medicine is you have to stick with that timing. So you're, if you're taking it with lunch, better to stick with lunch every day. So don't keep, don't take uh, your meal, I mean, with breakfast one day and then with lunch or with dinner, it is not going to help. It's not, it is actually not, it's not advisable. Yes, so ma'am. That's, that's yeah. We should change any uh, in meal, some cold thing, banana or buttermilk or anything that we have to increase the proportion in the meal. In the meal, as I talk to you, mainly uh, healthy diet, like less fatty food or less fried food, less 
salty in mean, uh, salt is one of the primary thing which can help yeah. in controlling blood pressure so if you are mainly talking about blood pressure in general your diet should be healthy healthy means uh, have adequate portions of carbohydrate and protein and fat healthy fat and then uh, have uh, i mean uh, make a note of uh, how much of salt you are taking uh, as i told you processed food less processed food like papad or uh, any of the fry ins those uh, those things have like i mean lot of salt um, i mean uh, pickles have lot of salt so make sure that it is less chilies i mean uh, all of those are yeah, you add more spice you'll add more salt right i mean when yes, you're all cooking yes. experts uh, uh, yes. your salt content goes uh, really high so i mean milder food in general it is better more fresh food fruits and vegetables it's going to be helpful okay thank you ma'am thank um, you very much um, that's great so other i mean uh, we are we are going to see uh, some of the tips you have a monitor at home what can you do in general to get a good measurement so as i told you digital monitors are generally accurate you have to make sure that it's not an age old monitor and uh, if your monitor shows 140 I mean it shows perfectly normal reading and your doctor's uh, monitor shows uh, different reading then it's uh, better to check make sure because the digital monitor can age also so make sure that uh, it is appropriate you have once every few years you have to get the monitor calibrated cuff size as i told you the cuff I mean uh, it is important most of the time arm cuff so uh, it is uh, upper arm cuff is more accurate so we see many uh, wrist cuff or forearm cuff I mean if you don't if you don't get uh, you you are not able to get a good uh, size arm cuff I mean using forearm cuff or uh, wrist cuff is okay for a general idea but uh, in general upper arm cuff so where you where you have the cuff in the arm that is uh, yeah, accurate uh cuff size if it is too small for your arm it can increase your blood pressure reading if it is too loose it can lower your blood pressure reading so i mean good proper cuff size is good when you starting blood pressure check I mean or when you are changing medicine in general check it at least two times a day for a period of time at least for a week to 10 days and once in the morning before you eat anything and once in the evening and make sure it is around the same time every day and keep a log of that blood pressure as i told you before blood pressure is not just one reading my blood pressure is always 142 by 74 it cannot be like that so it is it is going to change it's going to change based on your mood your eating your activity I mean it can change right so it's better to take an average so you when you are checking your blood pressure I mean do it two times or three times and take a reading I mean when you are uh, doing an average average uh, wait for about 1 to 3 minutes before you repeat that blood pressure so every time you repeat blood pressure you are going to get different readings but then take an average of uh, the the readings so if it's two different like at least three three times so avoid caffeine tobacco chewing or smoking alcohol 30 minutes at least before checking blood pressure so uh, food I mean don't uh, don't take at least for 30 minutes before because that can affect your blood pressure reading so as i told you before not it doesn't matter which side right or left just check on the same side uh, some people you know I mean they roll up the sleeve and then do the cuff I mean, when the that cuff uh, it will not sit properly on the arm. So generally, uh, keep it uh, just one arm length. I mean, don't don't have like too many too much of cloth underneath, or even bare skin. I mean, uh, just remove that side of the shirt and check. That can give better accurate accurate readings. Don't check blood pressure right after you wake up. So generally, we say check it in the morning. So what time do you check? Usually, wake up. at least give 15 to 20 minutes after you wake up so brush your teeth do your routine things don't just go for running and then come but i'm saying just uh, wait for 15 20 minutes I mean slowly moving slowly before you check blood pressure uh, don't eat before checking blood pressure so you have to, it's better to check it uh, empty stomach sit comfortably in a chair main thing that to note is uh, your feet should be uncrossed so many people your ankle is crossed and they check I mean even that can slightly increase blood pressure so some of the simple tips that you can do to get a better reading keep arm supported on a table or pillow so in general keep the monitor at the heart level 
So keep the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the arm should be at the machine level and which should be to in the, at the heart level. So um, when you're checking, when you're keeping it on the table and uh, make sure that your arm is uh, rested on the table or you can use a pillow and uh, keep, uh, keep the arm supported. Your arm should not be too tight. You don't need to clench your wrist. So those are some of the tips to just keep your, uh, relax yourself when you're checking blood pressure. Don't talk while checking blood pressure. Most of the time they keep, ah, I know this reading is going to be high or this going to, so don't, don't talk when you're checking blood pressure. Better to keep quiet and just uh, do the blood pressure reading. Don't look at the monitor if it makes you more tensed. You can take, as I told you before, one to two readings and uh, measure average blood pressure for more accurate reading. Every time you're doing uh, two readings, uh, at least wait for two to three minutes before you take the second reading. Because uh, you take one reading, you're not satisfied, you're going to pump the monitor again, that's not going to be good. So just wait two, three minutes and then uh, or take the reading. So these are some of the tips for getting good uh, blood pressure reading at home. Any questions before we move to the next chronic health problems? Yeah, Vijay, we have a question on the chat box by Jayama, right? Just yes, yes there is a question in the chat box. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it okay to have BP of 140 by 90 at 860 and above? What is that? that uh, is it okay to have blood pressure yeah. of 140 over 90 at 860 and above? Yes. So, according to um, one of the guidelines that I actually follow, I mean, it's JNC7 guideline. It is, uh, it's the uh, National Kidney Foundation in, uh, um, in US. I mean, uh, what they suggested in 2017, they released a, um, a guideline. So for age 60 and above, their guideline was 150 over 90. But actually that has a lot of class. So when you are perfectly healthy, you don't have any other health problem and you just have high blood pressure. So it's a 150, I mean, a 140 over 90, that's uh, unanimous, like WHO, American Heart Association, all of them agree that, I mean, you don't need to straight away go and start taking medicine when your blood pressure is around 140 to 90. If it is above 140 or above 90, then definitely yes. Uh, along with lifestyle changes, you, you need to um, uh, start taking medicine. So uh, it, it is okay if you don't have any other chronic health condition. If you have diabetes, if you have high cholesterol, if you have any other chronic health problem, it is good to keep your blood pressure less than 130 over 80. Uh, some doctors say okay, that's clear. Thank you, thank you. If your uh, some some say that your age of your age plus one thirty is the limit for your BP, is it so, right? Uh, that's, uh, that is what uh, previously the guidelines mean. As you say, age plus uh, one hundred or I mean the, that was considered as uh, uh, the uh, normal blood pressure. But what they have found these days, like I mean, after several studies by Heart Association and uh, various, I mean, they have, they have found out that uh, even in older adults, um, yeah, it is, it is uh, uh, important to keep uh, control of blood pressure. I mean, it's not the same as uh, what we were thinking before. So your 70 years age plus 170 is going to be normal. So it's not like that now. So what they have, that's why I mean, it's better to keep it below 140 over 90. And uh, if, you, if you have any chronic health problem, it is important to keep it under 130 also, even lower. I'm not saying that very tight blood pressure control is required. Actually, I'm not too, I'm also a little bit conservative. So I don't like to keep uh, blood pressure too tight, too tightly controlled because that can cause various other problems in older adults like fall, um, so because I've seen many uh, geriatric I mean, I, 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 uh, population in nursing homes in US, I mean, uh, we, we don't keep the blood pressure too tightly controlled, meaning in uh, around 100, 110, uh, it is not required. So if your blood pressure is around uh, 130 over 80 to 140 over 90, uh, I'm, I'm generally happy with it.
But if you have heart disease or diabetes, uh, if you have had a heart attack or stroke before, lower is better. 130, 80 is better. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. All right. Should we move, uh, yeah, we can we can move, move to the next one? Yeah. Yes, we can move on. So the next one is going to be, I mean, uh, I think most of us, uh, we, are, we are going to know, I mean, uh, it's uh, going to be somewhat a repetition because all of these are, um, uh, uh, all of the diseases are somewhat similar in the way, I mean, uh, risk factors. Uh, again, some, uh, again, a quiz. So on high cholesterol or hyperlipidemia, we say, which cholesterol test number? So you get your cholesterol test. There are uh, various uh, tests in cholesterol, right? Lipid profile. So which number is important for your heart? Is it LDL? L LDL. LDL. Or triglyceride. Triglyceride. Oh, which, which one is important for the LDL. heart? LDL. Triglyceride. Oh, sorry. So LDL is the right answer. Yeah, LDL is the bad cholesterol. HDL is the good cholesterol. And triglyceride is a type of cholesterol which is produced in the liver. So we'll talk about it, but uh, LDL is important for your heart health. What is the main symptom of high cholesterol? Tiredness, weight gain, no symptoms. No symptoms. No symptoms. Yeah, I'm sorry, it keeps going back. No symptom. So again, a silent uh, disease, uh, just uh, like uh, uh, high blood pressure. <laughs> Your body needs cholesterol. Is that right? Yes. 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 True. Yes. True. Yes. True. Yes. True. Yes. True. So your body, True. when you eat food and uh, from that carbohydrate, from that protein, uh, your body is going to make cholesterol. Your liver is uh, producing cholesterol in the night. What, uh, what, why do, why does it need to do? I mean, uh, it's uh, your, your, I mean, vitamin D production. I mean, some of the hormones are produced from cholesterol. I mean, you need, you need uh, cholesterol for the body, but usually your body produces its own cholesterol. So you don't need to actually start taking cholesterol. <laughs> All right, we'll see about what is high cholesterol. So high level of uh, fat in the blood, lipids in the blood is hyperlipidemia or high cholesterol. Um, excessive fat in the blood, it can accumulate in the blood vessel. As I showed you in the first picture, um, it's a, of high cholesterol. I mean, uh, it, can, it can reduce the blood supply. It, the, when that block or pl plaque, it uh, ruptures, then it can cause clot and it can cause stroke or heart attack. So, those, uh, so that's, that's what happens with uh, excessive high cholesterol in the blood. Numbers, I mean, uh, again, it's uh, usually this lab, I mean, lipid profile is done as fasting. Fasting lab is uh, at least, uh, at least we say eight to 10 hours, but you can fast for up to 12 hours uh, um, uh, to get the cholesterol levels checked. Uh, so mainly we, I mean, there are different numbers they give. So, but the main thing that you need to know is total cholesterol. So normal level is less than 200. LDL is the bad cholesterol, as I said, it's bad for the heart. So it's bad cholesterol, uh, less than 130. So 130 varies with age and uh, coexisting disease. So with age, I mean, uh, if, uh, if you don't have uh, diabetes, if you have high blood pressure and high cholesterol, your, your cholesterol level is, LDL cholesterol is around 140. I'm not going to jump and start uh, medicine for that. So it is okay. Uh, same thing. So it varies with age and your coexisting disease conditions. HDL is good for the heart. It's good cholesterol. Generally higher than 40. So if it is gen the same in 60 is better, 50 or over 50 or 60 is better. For males uh, over 45, we uh, we, we can we tend, I mean males are more prone to get heart disease uh, or any of the diseases so it is better to I mean keep it above 40. This lipidemia I mean uh, uh, abnormal I mean cholesterol uh, is very 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 common in Southeast Asians Indians it is uh, it is called as metabolic syndrome where your HDL is very very low. So any of my relative recently, I mean, even recently I've seen, so any male members, uh, in, even in your household, you can check um, their cholesterol, HDL level, good cholesterol. If for Indian male, 
is very low. Less than 30 is what I have commonly seen. I mean, if I'm doing uh, 15 tests, 10 or 12, they're going to have uh, more less than 30. I've seen 24, 20, HDL is so low. For ladies, uh, we have the good hormone. I mean, uh, uh, so it is estrogen hormone. It is helpful. I mean, HDL is usually for ladies uh, 45 and above. Usually, I mean, when uh, menopause, pre menopausal ladies, before menopause, your uh, HDL level is going to be 55, 60, 70. Uh, it's healthy uh, cholesterol, which is uh, very good. But even now, I mean, even for ladies, these days metabolic syndrome we're seeing so i mean uh, hdl levels are low i've seen lower than 40 for uh, you know, menstruating ladies also even when they are uh, not even a menopause age but still their hdl level is lower because of lifestyle triglyceride is uh, as i told you it's a type of cholesterol which is produced in the liver from uh, what you eat like your carbohydrate protein gets converted to triglyceride 150 or less ideally but uh, less than 200 is good you eat and you're not fasting, uh, then uh, your triglyceride can go up, definitely. Same with your LDL also, but uh, triglyceride is uh, much more. Like postprandial triglyceride, it can be more. It can be 300, uh, so better to fast. Uh, that's why, I mean, they say don't uh, eat or drink anything after, definitely not after midnight when you're getting your sugar, when you're getting your lab check at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. I mean, uh, try to eat dinner early and then... Uh, don't uh, eat or uh, drink anything other than water. So water is okay. Uh, taking your medicine with water is fine. Uh, a little bit of black coffee in the morning without milk or sugar is fine. Uh, these are the things uh, when, uh, to note for your uh, cholesterol checkup, lab checkup, blood test. Risk factors, again, it's going to be repetition, just like high blood pressure. So familial hyperlipidemia, I mean, overweight, obesity, it has, it can predispose. I mean, coexisting disease like diabetes, high blood pressure, unhealthy uh, eating, it can cause problem eating habits and sedentary lifestyle, uh, it can cause uh, high cholesterol. Other conditions like thyroid disease, like hypothyroidism, it can cause uh, cholesterol problem. So those are there, but I'm just giving common reasons. Symptoms, as uh, many of you mentioned, it's silent. So uh, nobody can just uh, say uh, that I have perfectly fine cholesterol level unless and until you get your cholesterol uh, levels checked. So uh, it's uh, better. Uh, that's why I say like uh, when you're uh, 45 or above, get a checkup uh, blood blood test uh, for cholesterol level even before that i mean uh, as i told you about for uh, blood pressure same for cholesterol overweight obese children overweight obese uh, teenagers or uh, even young adults 18 to 25 it's important to go ahead and check cholesterol panel at least once to make sure once every five years for the younger age group but uh, 45 and above once every two to four years if you don't have any other health problem. And if you have health problem, like high blood pressure, even one health condition, it's important to have cholesterol level checked at least once every year. Excessive fat, what can it do? In heart, it can cause heart attack, as I said. Uh, it can cause uh, stroke because of uh, blood vessels can get blocked and it can cause stroke. In legs, it can cause poor circulation. Many times you say claudication pain, like you walk for a certain distance, uh, you walk, you climb up a stair, you have to stop and rest till that pain goes away. It's called claudication pain. It's because of poor circulation in your leg. So all of those are because of high cholesterol, which are blocking the, uh, which are causing blockages in the circulation, blood circulation. How to manage the three mantra again, diet, uh, increase physical activity and medicines. Diet, healthy uh, diet, I mean, decrease, it's, it's not a, uh, it's a no-brainer. I think everyone uh, knows healthy diet now. I mean, uh, uh, include more fruits, vegetables, more, uh, uh, less of uh, fatty food or fried food, less butter, um, less white sugar. I mean, I'm going to talk in detail uh, during diabetes. It's going to be the same for cholesterol also. And increase physical activity. I'm going to touch base on what is good physical activity when we talk about diabetes. It's the same for high cholesterol. What is that? No, no, no. Yeah, you continue. Somebody's yeah. Uh, yeah, I muted. Okay. 
and uh, medicines uh, uh, so only when cholesterol level is really high if you have another health condition like diabetes or heart attack or heart disease it's important to go ahead and because uh, the statin is one type of heart medicine which can help with cholesterol but it can help with uh, other things like uh, um, rebuilding your heart after heart failure after heart attack when uh, the heart is getting remodeled uh, cholesterol medicine statin it actually helps same thing with uh, you see commonly in with uh, high cholesterol these days uh, one thing i wanted to just touch base upon is non alcoholic liver disease um, so it's called as um, it's it is very common alcoholic liver disease liver problem uh, cirrhosis and other liver problem previously we thought like I mean, at least a few, several. I mean, 30 years ago, we were seeing liver disease mainly because of uh, alcoholic liver problem. I mean, alcohol and other things. But now we are more and more we are seeing um, uh, a non-alcoholic uh, liver, uh, fatty liver. So, um, fatty. Many times when you do ultrasound for, uh, especially in uh, Southeast Asians or Indians, we see like uh, fatty liver very commonly these days. Liver fat gets deposited in inside your liver, and it can cause irritating. It can cause hepatitis initially. It can cause uh, cirrhosis, which is uh, shrunken liver. Uh, at, up to a certain point, it's all reversible. Once you start uh, this statin medicine, the cholesterol medicine, it is the treatment for uh, fatty uh, liver disease. So, what, what mean? Uh, it's called as NASH, uh, non-alcoholic uh, hepatosteatosis. So, um, for that, uh, we are seeing more commonly these days of obese people getting a liver problem. So uh, statin is, uh, other than the lifestyle, uh, statin can help. So uh, the, that's about uh, medicine for high cholesterol. So let's uh, move on to the diabetes. Uh, uh, any questions quickly? And then I will go into diabetes. Any questions for cholesterol? Can we move on? Recently, in the recent past, there have been messages coming in the WhatsApp saying that right. cholesterol is yeah. no more to be considered as one of the problems causing diseases. So, is it uh, as I, it says that some studies have proved that? Is it right? So that is, uh, I mean, uh, so as of now, I mean, uh, many of the WhatsApp messages. Uh, I mean, we cannot uh, authenticate by research studies. So it's not, I mean, any, any of those, uh, uh, you have to make sure that uh, you're getting from an authentic proof. Uh, mm -hmm. I, ha I have also received multiple messages about uh, cholesterol being, of course, you need cholesterol. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, you're, as I told you, I mean, we are not going to treat everyone with uh, cholesterol uh, problem. But then um, if you have particular diseases like sugar problem or heart problem uh, or stroke, it is very important to take care of uh, the cholesterol numbers. If you are healthy, no health problems. If you're just the cholesterol is high, probably active and healthy lifestyle and doing some alternative measures like, I mean, uh, including uh, good uh, omega fatty acids in the diet, I mean, uh, good uh, fibers, I mean, a good, good portion of fiber in the diet, those things are going to help. Fenugreek is going to help. Um, so the, those type of measures, I mean, flaxseed is going to help. You can just do lifestyle change. Even then, I mean, uh, if you're starting to develop, you have very high cholesterol, you're starting to see signs of blockages or if, you, if there is anything, any other uh, coexisting disease, it's important to take care of it. Once you know that you have uh, another health problem, uh, just sitting and closing your eyes, it's not going to be advisable. Okay, thank you. All right. So you're ready for a quiz for diabetes? So it's a, again three simple questions. What's the main source of energy in our uh, food? So is it uh, uh, so is it carbohydrate or protein or fat? Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrate. Yeah. That's very simple. 
dash is the hormone which helps your body to control the sugar level insulin 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 you give insulin but insulin. your body makes yeah half of your calorie insulin. in a meal comes from carbohydrates carbs carbohydrates carbs carbs carbohydrates very simple ah again what is diabetes i think many of us know uh, it's a chronic health problem with high blood sugar right your body uh, metabolizes the carbohydrate so your body burns the carbohydrate that you take many of us have normal way of burning the food that we take we say like um, uh, so the I mean, metabolism is it's, if you have abnormal carbohydrate metabolism or abnormal carbohydrate burning capacity then either because of your body is not producing enough insulin or you you have enough insulin but your body is resistant to insulin then you can develop high blood sugar uh three types type 1 type 2 and gestational gestational is when during pregnancy you can get a uh, uh, blood sugar that's the pro- that's the reason why all pregnant ladies uh, you need to uh, do a blood sugar check at least I mean when they are around 8th week or 12th week of pregnancy first second to third month of uh, pregnancy important to get thyroid levels checked important to get blood counts checked important to get blood sugar check so type 1 is juvenile diabetes young uh, onset I mean uh, young people's diabetes uh, that's mainly because of hereditary reason or autoimmunity we are going to see that type 2 is primarily what we are focused on now it's adult onset diabetes numbers again how do you diagnose diabetes if you are fasting sugar when you get a blood check Uh, when you are fasting when you are uh, getting a blood uh, level check then uh, when you are fasting after uh, fasting check it is uh, more than or equal to 126 it is diagnosed uh, you are diagnosed with diabetes two hour post prandial which is two hour after meal if it is more than or equal to 200 then uh, or a random check of more than 200 then uh, we say you have diabetes a1c hemoglobin a1c is a level in the blood it's a blood test and it's usually the average sugar for last 3 months it's again if it's more than 6.5 we say you have diabetes um i'm going to move quickly because i think we've taken a long time so risk factors as i told you type 1 we are not too much uh, worried about its autoimmunity uh, one thing to know about it is there is no insulin production in the body in type 1 so many of uh, type 1 diabetics have, uh, they are they are taking insulin type 2 it's adult onset insulin resistance is uh, common so um, risk factors for type 2 is obesity hereditary reasons autoimmunity can be there too sedentary lifestyle I mean unhealthy even when your forefathers did not have but you are over weight 125 kilos and you are eating a very you are leading a sedentary lifestyle uh, then the risk factor for you getting diabetes is very high so that's a adult onset or type 2 diabetes uh, diabetes symptoms silent disease as i said silent killer uh, most adults with high blood uh, high blood sugar I mean they are not going to have any symptoms uh yeah you, your blood sugar can be 200 but you may not have symptom not everybody some of them are more prone to get symptoms like thirst we say polydipsia polyuria i mean you you are more and more thirsty you are drinking lot of water more and more hungry you are eating a lot i mean uh, you urine urinate a lot that's uh, one of the common symptoms that you see I mean especially at night Uh, we say nocturia you go to the bathroom 3 4 times in a night yeah, then that's a symptom of high sugar in the body you are hungry a lot you are thirsty weight loss I mean excessive weight loss because of excessive sugar in the body it can be there tiredness can be there uh, so treatment again the same three mantra diet increase physical activity medicines so we are going to see a little bit of uh, all of those the right. least thing in yeah was there any question medicine i'm not going to talk much because there is a lot to talk about and uh, it may may be too much information we are going to focus mainly on diet and exercise medicine is uh, there are type 2 diabetes i'm mainly focusing for type 2 uh, oral medicine lot of types 
lot of newer medicines now lot of them have really good benefits as well i mean kidney benefits are there some of them are uh, very good for your weight so lot of uh, newer medicines and uh, insulin and other injectables I mean we used to have just one regular insulin before or one long acting insulin before one short acting but lot of types of uh, uh, very, very effective uh, long acting insulins are available uh, even the devices are um, updated, like uh, not, not uh, the insulin syringes. Uh, nowadays, they have the pen. You just uh, uh, take enough insulin and then click. Uh, it's very easy to use, but you need to learn it properly. Healthy diet, uh, it's just uh, some ideas. I'm not going, I mean, uh, so it's a uh, healthy diet for diabetic, uh, 1,800 calorie per day. Uh, roughly for a male, I mean 2,000 uh, calorie per day you can take. For diabetics, I mean 1,800 calorie per day. It's a 60-20-20 rule. 60 portions of uh, carbohydrate, 20 of fat, and 20 of protein. So when you say the plate method I put, I mean when you see this plate, uh, you have one quarter of grains, one quarter of protein, one quarter of fruit, and one quarter of vegetable, and some dairy on the side. So I mean, I'm going to show you some sample plates uh, for uh, diabetic diet. So it, it, it generally it helps rather than taking some and going again, second serving and third serving, just putting it in one plate uh, of uh, all of those, it is going to help um, to minimize the portion size. So most of the time uh, we do pretty good with uh, diet. That's what I would say. But then many times we don't know how much of carbohydrate we are taking, how much of uh, protein and fat. So it will help. Calorie counting will help. Um, there are many new apps which are available in smartphones. The most common is MyFitnessPal, uh, Calorie Counter. So, so many, if you Google the Calorie Counter app, you are going to see so many. So many of those are free apps. The My Fitness app, um, um, I mean, uh, my son who is 21, he has that. He puts any diet like a sambar or kutu or any South Indian or North Indian, I mean, it's there on that My Fitness. So you get an idea, like you put one small, one cup of um, uh, sambar or one cup of kutu, you're, you're going to know how much of calorie you're taking. So it will give an idea. You don't need to do that. Once you know your diet, you don't, know, you don't need to do that every day. But then when you know your sugar is not perfectly under control, try these methods. Try taking the calories, count the calorie and down. Diabetic diet. Um, so main key concepts are avoid white sugar, white rice, white flour, white butter, processed food, sweets, all of those mean try to avoid. Uh, include fruits, vegetables, fresh food and uh, fresh fruits and vegetables in the diet with every meal. Include more whole grains, brown rice, Kapli wheat is like samba godama, we say in Tamil, samba godama. Uh, the kapli wheat is very good. Oats also, white uh, processed quick oats is not that good. I mean, steel cut, steel cut oats is like the whole grain version of the oats. So those are uh, very good. Key concept of carbohydrate, as I told you, 60 of carbohydrates. So reduce that portion size. If you are if you are taking uh, two ladles or one ladle of rice with each sambar or rasam or thayir, it is better to take just one cup of uh, rice and then include more uh, vegetable and fruit on the side, vegetables on the side or sabji or dal on the side uh, so that you don't take more of that rice component. Same with uh, roti. I mean, just two small roti or one big roti along with more uh, salad and uh, dal and sabji. Eat every four to six. Don't starve for a long time. So every four to six hours, that is going to definitely help to keep your sugar stable. Sample meal. I'm just going to go quickly because uh, we have taken a lot of time. So uh, to, I can send this as well uh, separately. But uh, this is just a rough idea. So I mean, include sprouts. A small cup of sprout in the morning. It can be steamed or raw. Include a cup of uh, salad along with your breakfast, whatever breakfast. You are, if you're eating uh, two small dosa or one big dosa, along with sprouts and salad, your a portion of that dosa is going to go down, right? So that's why we are trying to incorporate more uh, fresh vegetable, fresh fruit, uh, and uh, more of that fiber in the diet. So that's why okay. I included... Uh, salad in the diet with every meal. All, 
small uh, orange or apple half an apple is okay you have diabetes it doesn't mean that you can avoid you don't need to avoid fruit it's uh, actually uh, good so half an apple or just a quarter cup or half a cup of papaya this is just an example lunch half a cup of brown rice or uh, even white rice two small kapli wheat rotis one cup of uh, sambar or dal or kootu and one cup of uh, sabji along with one cup of so if you have all of this in one plate and you eat all of that you will feel more, much more full if you are going to eat a little bit more portion make sure you eat along with a little bit more of kootu and uh, sabji uh, so dal or sabji so that you don't eat more of that rice snack is uh, one cup of tea with one small toast with peanut butter or something to a uh, small portion to keep you full half cup of vegetable pulao or half cup of brown rice in the night along with same concept so one cup of sabji and one cup of dal at night also or one cup of salad with sabji it will help Uh, it will help to minimize the portion of the carbohydrates and you are intaking I mean even that salad or uh, it all has a healthier carbohydrate in it but uh, you are not taking the grain part this is some sample meal I mean uh, from uh, so one of my cousin who does uh, 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 the, a program uh, for, for diabetes like nu nutrition program so you uh, sent uh, so you can see that plate having uh, one cup of a small portion of rice and then a small portion of salad a portion of sabji and dal same here with dal and uh, sub, uh, salad and uh, sabji with uh, 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 roti this is my plate with one small cup of brown rice and uh, cauliflower sabji and some salad and uh, dal if you can take more of rice i'm not saying that you just keep this plate if you want in at least initially uh, if you take all of this you'll definitely feel full don't go for second serving before you finish if you are going to take a little bit more rice take the same amount of dal along with salad and sabji so that you feel fuller quickly so you don't take more carbohydrate portion the rice portion is not lot and that's about the diet so one uh, question like yeah yeah one question about the diet like uh, i am a rice eater but they say don't combine rice and chapati is it correct if you so have combine meal, means uh, in the same meal in the same meal yes same meal. yeah some combined meal I mean uh, if you are going to take uh, just one small roti along with uh, one uh, like half a cup of rice it's going to be okay there is okay. no problem with combining the rice it's all carbohydrate only thing you need to know is how much of carbohydrate you are going to take ah yeah, acha both are same equally same <laughs> roughly they say I mean uh, roughly when you when you are talking in grams uh, per meal 65 grams of carbohydrate Okay. 65 to 75 grams of carbohydrate so what is 65 gram I mean uh, half a quarter cup of uncooked rice is equal to 100 grams of uh, carbohydrate mm -hmm. thank you yeah so there is one question in the chat box ha ah, yeah i uh, is it important to do a colonoscopy for those above 60 so I mean um, colonoscopy I mean as i have uh, been practicing in uh, western country uh, once you turn 50 we generally say a colonoscopy is uh, required so I mean uh, that's done once every 10 years for india uh, if you have any uh, problems in india we don't see colon cancer that uh, uh, I mean uh, frequently but uh, colonoscopy is uh, without any symptom i mean uh, you don't need to get a colonoscopy as a routine thing if you are getting constipation if you are newly developing constipation if you it's uh, some many people have uh, uh, constipation as a regular uh, many uh, some bowels I mean uh, we don't some of them they don't move the bowels regularly they have uh, bowels once every two days or even every day I minutes mean, uh, they have I mean if they have constipation if it's long standing you don't need to worry about that but you always had a normal bowel and then now you are uh, you are not having a normal bowel you are either having lot more diarrhea or if you are having uh, thin stools or uh, you are not having enough stool it is a concern 
we are seeing a lot more uh, cases of uh, colon cancer these days uh, even in india even in south india where we eat a good amount of fiber and good amount of i mean healthy food so but then uh, i mean definitely are you going to get i mean do you need to get colonoscopy i mean i would say uh, i think I mean, it, it can be a case to case basis thank you thank you so physical activity I mean uh, uh, mainly uh, physical activity one of the question that uh, sunanda sent was uh, uh, actually does it actually help with controlling sugar uh, it it does and uh, the other question was uh, for cholesterol also um uh, it says uh, it's a, I'm, I'm just do regular exercises help to manage or prevent chronic illness right so and how exercise helps in controlling helping controlling diabetes, diabetes. yeah so you could, for chronic health problem i mean i as i told you any chronic health problem the three even for thyroid problem even for i mean uh, so any any problem you take for sleep problems, insomnia is a chronic health problem. So even for anything, I mean, uh, a physical activity is going to be helpful. So uh, I, I mean, uh, for for main for so the first question, does it help to manage or prevent? Definitely yes, it does help. Uh, so a few things it can do. One is it can, it helps in keeping your weight under control if you are uh, staying physically active. Other thing is if your uh, blood your blood pressure can uh, be controlled when you're uh, when you're staying physically active. Sugar well, can diabetes be actually controlled by staying physically active? Yes. So how does it uh, control? I mean there are uh, short term ways and long term ways. So short term uh, when you're actively exercising, uh, so your muscle is using uh, its uh, its the muscle has storage right? Glycogen is the uh, stored form of glucose. It's going to use that form of glucose when you are exercising. But then it is also going to use your blood glucose. So your blood sugar level is actually going to go down even when you're when you're going to be exercising. So actually short term, that day when you're exercising, your sugar is going to be better controlled. Definitely, yes. Long term effect, uh, your uh, insulin resistance, I told you, right? You have enough insulin in the body, but it's not working. So that insulin uh, resistance is actually going to uh, improve. Your, your body's insulin is going to act uh, better when uh, you are exercising. So it is it is going to help with insulin resistance, improving the uh, insulin resistance problem. And then it is going to help with uh, reducing weight. And uh, when you reduce weight, the insulin resistance is going to go down and your sugar level, sugar control is going to be very good. So it does help with uh, sugar control overall. How much of exercise? We keep talking about exercise. I mean, how much of exercise should you do? So moderate physical activity, I mean, light activity inside the house, it's also going to be good. But uh, when you are going to manage chronic health problem, uh, good moderate activity is going to be helpful. What is moderate activity? I mean, uh, it is brisk walking, walking uh, brisk bicycling, if you are able to bicycle, if you are able to do in treadmill, if you are able to do uh, climbing up stairs, climbing down stairs, those, uh, those are going to be helpful. Uh, how much? 20 to 30 minutes most of the day. This is uh, guidelines by uh, many of the American Heart Association also says that, I mean, 150 minutes of moderate physical activity in a week or roughly 30 minutes per five days or 20 minutes for six, all the, all days, I mean, every day. 20 to roughly, I would say 20 to 30 minutes of brisk activity uh, every day is going to be helpful. So that's about activity, and uh, when you when you are this is mainly for diabetics. So as I told you, even that day when you are exercising, even whether you are on insulin, whether you are not, when when whether you are on medicine or not, your blood sugar can uh, go down. So especially when you are on insulin or oral medicine for uh, diabetes, you have to be you have to note down these points. So good to get a blood sugar check. Uh, at least like I mean, uh, that morning before you go for good activity, not for all diabetes. So when you're on oral medicine or if your sugar is under good control, you don't need to check every time before you step out of the house check. I mean, I'm not saying that, but if you're on insulin and you know you're going to do a vigorous activity one hour, then it's better to check. 
So other thing is eat a small meal or snack when you are in insulin before activity, at least 30 minutes before, your, before you go out, uh, take a small meal or a snack. Keep a snack with you. Other important thing for diabetics is uh, keep yourself hydrated. You should drink plenty of liquids, especially when you are exercising. Um, so it is, it is important to keep yourself hydrated. Drink a lot of water. For a normal adult, I say 10 cups of water a day. It's easy to forget drinking water. So 10 cups of water a day is good. Uh, small snack with you when you are, uh, keep a small snack with you uh, when you are, especially when you know you're going to go for a walk for 45 minutes or one hour, or especially if you know you have a tendency for low blood sugar, keep a small snack with you. Uh, what do you take? I mean, you can, it can be like raisins or dry grapes or fruit juice, small packet or pouch, I mean, a piece of uh, fruit, uh, hot candy if your blood sugar is uh, dropping, even a small sugar packet. Uh, yeah, those are uh, some of the things. Glucose tablets, I mean, some of those can help with uh, bringing your sugar down. This is only when you have low sugar. Uh, then goal sugar. So what are the numbers? What's, what's your goal? And when you know you have diabetes. Before meal or fasting, when you know you have diabetes, it's important to keep it around 80 to 130 milligram. Uh, postprandial is after meal. So two hours after meal, it's important to keep it around 180, at least uh, ideally around 180, but less than 200 is a must. Bedtime, you check sugar range, especially when you are taking insulin, it's a good idea to check ranges around that time. And even sometimes we say 2 a.m. sugar check, when, especially when you're adjusting insulin levels. Uh, bedtime, 130 to 140 is a good level. Hemoglobin A1C is a, a blood test that we normally, that nowadays we do uh, for sugar check because sugar level, I mean, you check a fasting sugar check, that is the previous night what you ate or that day, that morning, what, you, uh, what your sugar level is in the blood, that's what it is. Uh, the A1C is good because it shows how, what your average sugar has been in the last three months. So it gives a broader idea, like how your control has been in the last three months. So for goal is under seven. If, you're, if you don't have diabetes, your A1C is going to be five or 5.5, less than that. So that's what your A1C is going to be. If you have borderline sugar, pre-diabetes, so that's 5.8 to 6.5. When you, have, when you have diabetes, your A1C is going to be above 6.5. So for diabetics, we don't need to keep it under 6. I, it's, as I told you, like, I mean, uh, generally for older adults, uh, you don't need to be too tight. I mean, we are just like too tight blood pressure control, we don't need to keep too tight sugar control also. So under 7, I mean, uh, only oral, when you're not taking too many medicine, if you're still 60, 70, it's okay. Generally for over 75, I tend to keep the A1C level around seven to 7.5 because uh, studies have shown if it's too tight also, it's not good for the body. So around, uh, we don't want to keep it above 7.58. So that's, that's when we need to do adjustment of the medicine. Generally for uh, when you know you have diabetes, every six months getting this A1C check along with the uh, fasting sugar and the postprandial check, it is good. I check usually fasting sugar and A1C level every six months for diabetic patients. Urine microalbumin, it's a urine test where you check uh, albumin level in the urine. And uh, that shows whether your kidney is good or it is affected by diabetes or not. Uh, once a year, if you check it, it's good. Uh, when you know you have diabetes, get your cholesterol check once a year. Check your blood pressure periodically, at least once every, as I told you, these are sister diseases, right? One sister, I think uh, the special sister dies diabetes. I mean, uh, she's going to be followed by blood pressure and cholesterol most of the time. So when you see somebody with diabetes, you see that they have high blood pressure and high cholesterol also. So check all of those. So check your cholesterol, check your blood pressure when you know you have diabetes. So check blood pressure at least once every three months uh, and make sure that it is under control. So diabetes can cause a lot of complications, right? All the pathies, nephropathy, retinopathy, neuropathy, all of that can be because of uh, diabetes. Diabetes foot. So I'm going to talk about what can you do for those. Um, heart disease, it's uh, mainly I mean, keep your 
uh, heart disease because of diabetes is called as heart disease equivalent because i'm not trying to scare or anything but then just i mean once you have diabetes it's important to keep the other three thing as it I mean blood pressure and cholesterol under control so uh, when you when you know you have heart disease because of diabetes keep your blood pressure under control keep your sugar under control keep your cholesterol under control make sure you take all the medicines for blood pressure sugar and cholesterol maintain active healthy lifestyle healthy eating and uh, there are some uh, medicines for uh, heart disease like aspirin uh, that you have to keep taking uh, so just you have to go to a doctor visit at least once every 3 months or 6 months periodically so once you know that you have heart disease kidney disease uh, diabetes is one of the I mean, uh, uh, major reasons why you get uh, kidney failure. Uh, so kidney disease, it's important to for preventing kidney disease, uh, checking, keeping sugar under control, keeping blood pressure under control, and then check uh, that urine test, urine albumin once every year. Eye problem, retinopathy, I mean to prevent retinopathy, I mean keeping sugar under control, but then get your eyes checked once every year, dilated eye checkup once every year for uh, diabetic patients. No problem. So what I do for my diabetes uh, patient is there is a microfilament test. Uh, whenever I see them once a year, at least I get uh, a properly, I mean, you have to remove their shoes, remove the chapel and check the feet, uh, make sure they have good pulse and then um, uh, check the sole of the feet to make sure there is no wound or ulcer or callus. Uh, the, those are the things that doctor should do once every year and then uh, for you i mean uh, what should you do is uh, wear proper shoes especially when you have diabetes proper chapel so that you don't fall or you don't have get a wound um, uh, check your feet uh, periodically for foot ulcer or wound or fungal infection anything uh, wound delayed healing is going to be common with the diabetes a secondary infection is very common with diabetes patients. Cellulitis, we say, I mean, a skin infection is very common with diabetic patients. So it's important to maintain, make sure that your uh, feet is uh, looking normally. So no ulcers and things like that. So these are some of the, I mean, neuropathy, I mean, you, you may not feel it. Even when you have foot ulcer, you may not feel it. Ulcer is a wound, small wound, or something uh, pokes you and uh, you get a small wound. You may not know it because you may not feel it when you have diabetes. Uh, low blood sugar, this is mainly for people who have tendency, some oral medicines can make you make your sugar level to go down and insulin can make your sugar level to go down. Um, so when you, you should know what are the symptoms of hypoglycemia, because as I told you, tight sugar control for older people, I don't generally advise, uh, generally around seven or less than seven, I don't uh, recommend because of the risk for hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is much more risky than high, high sugar. So because uh, low sugar can cause uh, serious problems. So uh, when you uh, I mean go when your key, when your sugar levels keep going down periodically, that's not going to be good for your heart and uh, good for diabetes control in general. So uh, what is low sugar? When your sugar level, when you check, when you I mean uh, check your sugar level and it's around below seventy for diabetics. I'm talking about I mean, diabetic. If it's below 70, it is uh, low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. What symptoms can you get? You can, many times you feel uh, your, your, some people can be shaky. I mean, uh, they can feel tremor, restless, anxiety, sweaty. I mean, some people can have confusion, nausea, sleepy. I mean, uh, some of those you should identify. You should let your dear ones know, your husband or wife or your children know that uh, this can be because of low sugar. Treatment is 15-15 uh, rule, we say. So check sugar level. If the sugar level is below 70, so for some people, even uh, if your sugars are, have always been around 200, uh, even uh, 90, it can be low sugar with symptoms. So if your sugar level is low, take 15 grams of carbohydrate, like one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of honey, or one hot candy, one cup, cup of fruit juice, or one glucose tablet. So those things you can take, wait for 15 minutes and then repeat sugar check again. So check sugar, it's important to check sugar after 15 minutes. If it's still low, take again. So same amount of carbohydrate until the sugar goes up to 90 or 100. We don't want to shoot it up to 150, but at least we have to wait till it goes up uh, to about 100 or so. And you should not have much symptoms with it.
some of the resources I can give it to Sunanda and she can pass it along. Uh, I, I was thinking of uh, sharing the dietary approach to stop hypertension, the sugar diet, I mean, blood pressure diet, uh, some of these. And uh, just want to finish off uh, with a healthy mind, healthy body. I mean, uh, older adult, uh, it's uh, managing chronic health problems. It's, uh, you stay on top of your health disease. Don't deny. I mean, it's easy to say that I'm perfectly fine, but be aware of what you have and try to manage it. Uh, eat healthy diet in general. I think we do, I mean, as Indians, our diet is not that bad. I mean, uh, younger people is different, but uh, older people, I mean, generally our diet is pretty good. Uh, physically active, I mean, in my community, I see so many seniors walking so briskly every morning. It's like, it's really inspiring to see them. So uh, just keep I mean, staying physically active. When you're starting, start slow, you know, 10 minutes a day, every, I mean, just slowly increasing it. Uh, getting adequate sleep, uh, learning new things, staying socially engaged. I mean, I'm, uh, this is all just to keep your mind healthy and your body healthy. So learning new thing, I mean, uh, it's going to help. It has been shown that it helps to uh, keep uh, dementia away from uh, you. Like uh, memory is going to be staying intact. Learning new thing is learning new shloka or learning new. Uh, I mean, uh, my father-in-law learned a uh, new language. I mean, uh, he, uh, around 78, he came uh, to visit us. And before, just few months before, he, uh, he started going for French class. So it was, uh, and he was uh, enrolled in a mind, uh, I mean, a sharp mind program. Uh, so feel free to just try out new things, uh, even when you're older. So uh, staying socially engaged. I mean, I see a group of older adults sitting and chatting. I mean, I see I mean, good group of sloka group in, in the clubhouse, many of them uh, in the older age group. So st just stay socially engaged to keep your mind healthy and your body healthy also. Just, uh, just uh, two minutes about this uh, topic. I mean, I want you, if it is possible for you to uh, do this uh, little activity, I want you to keep doing. Uh, if you wish your brain to be five years younger than what it is today, cultivate greater curiosity. So it's a uh, curious mind. So this is something which uh, we can start doing from today. So what they have shown is, uh, see, when you, when you see a child, a five-year-old child, really curious, right? Two-year-old child, one-year-old child, they're even, even more curious. So starting to pull, I mean, whatever you keep, they're going to be pulling and uh, uh, picking it. The, the fire is there, they're going to go and try. I mean, that is uh, a child's brain, growing brain. It's, it's, I mean, when you grow older, I mean, the curiosity part, it slowly starts going down. And uh, you're starting to interpret more rather than being curious about it. So keeping a childlike curiosity, it's going to keep your brain healthier. I put this flower picture here, the daisy picture. So just wanted to point out certain things in that daisy picture. Are you, are you able to see this uh, yellow flower? So just notice the flower, uh, notice the color of the flower. So notice the uh, I mean edges of that flower. So you see it's not uniformly smooth. How many layers of petals are there in that flower? So the topmost layer is there. And then you see some petals down below there. And then a third layer, almost like three layers, it's there, right? And then the middle, the, 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 uh, the middle part of the flower, there is a small portion which looks like it has been bitten by a bee or something, right? So the, when, when, you are, when you are staying curious, when you are being curious, you can be just curious with that flower. So just one flower, pick it up. So for example, you see your own fingers, your, you see your own hands, right? See how, how, how different is each finger. So you can see so many new things which you haven't noticed before. So your nail may look different. So, so staying curious, curious I mean, now the, just some examples of that I'm giving. So if, uh, what I do is when I go for a walk, uh, rather than just focusing on, so I mean, if you let your brain 
uh, it's monkey mind we say right your mind wanders to something with either to the past or to the future you, you cannot control that so most of the time 80% of your brain is just wandering somewhere but then this curiosity like improve just improving that curiosity you're doing a little exercise uh, what what it uh, does is i mean what i do is i look for tulsi plant when i'm uh, going for a walk so i keep looking for the tree which changes color because where i'm walking in chennai there are uh, most of the plants or most of the trees are green so i keep looking for that tree which changes leaf color so this is just to keep your mind focused on something so just what the there are studies which has shown that uh, keeping a curious mind it can help in preventing dementia or memory problem just keeps your brain younger so just some interesting fact to think about um any questions and this lady was in our neighborhood in virginia i wanted to share her picture when i met her she was around 88 year old uh, 89 year old she when i took this picture she was 95 year old so this uh, old lady, she lives alone in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. And uh, every time I see her, I mean, I see her on the walking trail. She's walking with her dog and uh, she is, or now she's walking alone because the dog passed away, but uh, she's walking alone. Always with a bright smile. You see that smile on her face, right? So always with a bright smile. And every time you say somebody, some uh, passerby means somebody is walking, she will uh, talk to them for just a few minutes. She's called neighborhood's grandma because she's lived there for a long time. So I asked her one question. So I asked her like, I mean, every time I see you, you like, you I mean, she looks elated. She's very happy. So I, I asked her, oh, yeah, I mean, uh, you look really happy. So tell me your secret. So she said, I don't expect anything from anybody. I do my things and that's why I'm happy. I, I learned something from her that day. So it was, uh, I mean, every day, every time I meet her, she shakes my hand very, very hard, I mean, firm grip she has. She wants to engage with uh, another person and talk. So uh, that I just wanted to share, share that so, uh, with you. And, uh, that's about it. Any questions, feel free to ask. Can I ask you one question? Excuse me. Yes, yes, I know. I just uh, I get um, this thing burning of my feet, but I don't have sugar problem. But I, it burns in the night time and all. It burns because right. here it is very cold. I have to wear my socks also. If I wear my socks, it burns more. Then the night time I usually remove it. But I don't know why I get this burning sensation. So right. I don't know. Feet, but I don't have any sugar, sugar problem. Right. Neuropathy or uh, I mean, nerve uh, problem, it can nerve pain, you say. It can be because of uh, other conditions other than uh, sugar also. Okay. I would recommend you to get a thyroid level check because Thy thyroid, thyroid is okay. Yeah, I, I check my thyroid. It is okay. Now yeah. so the other thing is vitamin B12. Uh, B12 okay. deficiency, folate deficiency, it can cause uh, peripheral neuropathy. I'm taking a B12 also. B12 I'm taking. So, that uh, B12 as such or uh, so it's good to B get a folate level and folic acid level and B12 level checked in the blood. Okay. It's a blood okay. test that they can do and uh, it can be uh, it can be treated. Other uh, vitamin deficiencies it can do that in some uh, small nerve disease we say I mean it can cause uh, same type of burning sensation. Okay. Um, so if, if there are uh, I mean if it is really bothersome for you Neurologists can do what is called as EMG. I mean, they put small needles in the uh, muscles okay. and they can check what are the nerves. I mean, what type of nerve problem is that? So if vitamin okay. B12 level is normal, folic acid level is normal, thyroid is normal, sugar is normal, then that is one idea to get a uh, nerve uh, check um, uh, from, by a neurologist and address okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Lalita, you can click uh, stop sharing okay. so that this screen will go. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, before moving to the question and answer session, uh, thank you, Dr. Lalita, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, it was very, very informative, and I know uh, you end with a very good takeaway message of uh, curious mind and no expectation. Right? Uh, that was the two messages you end with. Actually, very good. Very actually, you know, uh, 
and uh, thank you very much to our you know uh, dear clients uh, they all got a very good opportunity to attend and interact with you uh, you know through this webinar and uh, uh, we are you know thanking all the clients uh, to attend today to make it as a successful event uh, we at growing young are continuously striving to provide not just fitness programs right and uh, we are you know trying to arrange uh, the webinar like this uh, which will be beneficial and information pertaining to the elderly and with all your support and blessings yes padma ma'am one second i yes, just want to add a compliment sorry for Dr. Alita, we are periodically laughing, dancing, doing aerobics and all those things with uh, and Sunanda. We are growing younger day by day, minute by minute. So that is one thing. Wonderful. And you have no expectation. It's nothing but Bhagavad Gita. Everybody should be aware of it. Thanks for they your are, They are doing exceptional service. Exceptional? So we are also growing exceptionally young. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Bhagavad Thank you, thank you, Bhagavad yeah yes so we see a, a few uh, new participants so I, we would just like to give a small intro about growing yeah so the mantra that was quite repeated during this session was three things the diet exercise and medicine right so here at growing young we try to give the physical activity part to all our elderly participants actually so we incorporate, uh, you know, aerobic activity, uh, strength training, balance training. So all of this all is very important as we cross 60 because unknowingly our balance comes down, our strength comes down. And that is how it, uh, you know, we don't understand that actually happens. But until something catastrophic happens, then we realize we have lost our balance. Right. So we at Growing Young make sure that the much needed 150 minutes of activity and uh, the regular strength training for two week, two days a week and the balance training for the seniors is being imparted every week so to us if you say the, the quotation that we normally say is exercise is the best known pill to humankind so there is no other better than exercise and uh, so we have been doing this sessions for almost six years and now with this pandemic we opened a new avenue and we started our online session so with the COVID hitting every house, it means that the elderly were locked inside. So their, you know, their uh, interaction was cut. Their physical activity was cut. Their regular walks was snapped. So that is why we thought it was very important that we introduce this physical activity program uh, and introduce it to their doorsteps. So they can stay safe at home. At the same time, they get the maximum benefit out of it. So that is how the Growing Young Online fitness program started so here i'm just sharing the contact details if you're interested uh, you can uh, you can uh, reach us we have our website www.growingyoung.co.in so you can actually send your inquiries and we will get in touch with you and other thing what we have noticed amongst our elderly population is the we uh, initially we used an international scale to assess the fitness levels so those who are consistently doing exercises for you know uh, six three six months every three months we evaluate their fitness levels and what we found there was an increase for about nine percent in the strength of the muscles and there was about you know for even the aerobic capacity increased to about six to seven percent so that is what exercise can do to all of you so one uh, important thing that we would like to tell here again is exercise for the sake of exercising when you are exercising uh, you know it is better like even if you're going for a walk or any kind of activity make sure that your focus is on the exercise and not to have the social communication at that time while the social communication is also important what happens is when we start walking with a group of friends the focus is on the talk and what happened what did we cook what movie are going to watch and this and that so we slow down our pace right so that is why it is very important that you focus on exercise and do it only for the sake of exercising so we see a massive improvement even in our uh, clients so a lot of them are here with us today so as uh, dr lalita was saying again and again so our seniors can do about 15 minutes of really quick aerobics a little bit of dancing in fact all of them even if they are 80 doesn't matter they do about 15 minutes of aerobics every day 
right and this was built up slowly it was not like on day one they were able to do this so we had them start with five minutes and then increase so as physiotherapist by profession with more than 20 years of experience we understand how the body will be there with aging process and we try to guide them accordingly during the sessions so that is about our program those are interested you can reach us in our, with our contact number or you can reach us through our website also okay thank you for your time and, and uh, there have, are uh, messages uh, you know in the chat box there is one uh, question know. by dr nimita ma'am so she, i mean uh, nimita ma'am had shared the question would you like to pose the question ma'am or shall i ask yeah before that there are you know many messages in the chat boxes thanking dr lalita uh, thanks for the presentation and i think uh, there is one raise the hand uh, you can ask your question sir uh, k uh, k n r i am k n r you want to ask a question oh. no i think it is by message okay i got a message yeah, also from him that you know he wants to ask a question <laughs> so you can unmute yourself and ask sir. Okay, before that, uh, you can ask Nimita ma'am's question, uh, Sunanda. Yeah, yes, Nimita ma'am, you can shoot your question. Uh, in spite of doing exercises, walking and all that, I, I have insomnia problems. Yeah, uh, it's audible, you, ma ma it's audible, you can ask. Yeah, in spite of uh, doing exercises and walking and healthy diet, I'm still having insomnia problems. So what is the question? I mean, uh, so as I told you, insomnia, I mean, our sleep problem, it is, uh, it, it's also one of the chronic health conditions. Some people can get uh, sleep problems or uh, insomnia. Uh, so what type of problem? Some, I mean, as you get older, either falling asleep or staying asleep, it can be, um, uh, it can be harder. So, and uh, every brain is different. Some people sleep a lot more as they get older. Some people, most people mean sleep much lesser. Um, so, I mean, what I would say is uh, follow a routine. I mean, uh, it's, there, there are things called, we call it a sleep hygiene. So, um, it's a, I mean, just maintaining this good sleep hygiene is going to be helpful. Exercise is one part of it. But uh, there are other things uh, which can help with uh, maintaining good sleep. So, for example, I mean, uh, keeping active throughout the day. If you're taking a nap, take a short nap, but uh, not, I mean, don't overdo during the daytime. And uh, exercising, at least, I mean, exercising the same physical activity, I mean, uh, as we talked about, at least 30 minutes every day, it's going to be helpful. But uh, if you are going to um, do it just an hour or two hours before sleep, it's not going to be good. So same thing, maintaining same sleep, sleep schedule, like nine o'clock I mean, uh, or 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, you should go to the bed at the same time every day. Avoiding caffeine, when, especially when you have sleep problem, Avoid caffeine after lunch. So post lunch, better not to take, your brain is probably super sensitive to caffeine. So try avoiding caffeine after lunch. Uh, caffeine is coffee or tea. And then maintaining, I mean, if you are in bed and you're not sleeping, don't stay in the bed for a long time. Don't, don't watch TV uh, lying down for a long time. Don't keep TV in the bedroom. As, that's what usually we say. So uh, I mean, generally bed is for sleeping only. If you are not getting sleep 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, you're just tossing. Better not to just lie down and just wait. Come, I mean, get up, do something like reading or listening to music till you're sleepy and then go back. Nowadays, so it's not uh, TV, time. right? In the like, you know, we are having uh, everyone has the phone in their hand as a screen. Not phone, right? Yeah, it's in the high hands. <laughs> True. How Better to avoid at least for an hour before your sleep. Hours before you go to bed, right away, the light can in fact keep your phone awake by nine o'clock if possible. Yeah. Finish so after nine, no, no gadgets. No not gadgets. just phone, but iPad and laptop and other things yeah 
so those are some other tricks warm milk and i mean uh, it has tryptophan so warm milk with uh, my husband takes warm milk with a little bit of honey uh, when when you just wake up and you're not able to sleep it, it definitely helps um, and uh, eating a big meal just before uh, sleep time it is not going to be helpful so try to eat around 7:30 if you're if you know you're going to bed at 10 so at least 2 3 hours before so warm shower in the evening it is going to help so those are some of the things that can help with sleep i know it's easy to say but it's uh, tough to follow sleep is we all need sleep to be to feel fresh the next day um the pills are not going to be that helpful so any of the sleeping pill it can make you addictive and it's not going to be helpful so uh, generally we say in uh, cognitive behavioral therapy uh, that is what's going to be the uh, beneficial uh, thing that can help but uh, you have to do mainly the sleep hygiene i think that will help yeah okay thank and you try a small banana just like you advise milk right it helps finish your dinner 3 hours before you go to bed yeah and then a small snacks like banana and warm small milk it will help okay thank you uh, anybody hi, can any other question can i hi this is manisha can i ask a one question i don't know it's a question i just want i'm a curious to know that's why i want to ask her something yes manisha ma'am okay i have a mother in law who is bedridden okay and um, her pressure was down to the level of 50 by 30 for almost one month and she still surviving yeah. Yeah. yeah to uh, 50 by 30 it used to go 60 by 40 50 by 30 was almost constant and now she's gone back to her uh, 100 by uh, 60 or whatever how does that mm-hmm. happen means the when it was low we were very scared it was almost for one and a half when she had such a low this one mm-hmm. pressure it is really low that's what i would say it's really low maybe i mean uh, as i told you like checking the but you have checked periodically is that right you have checked the we check it, no day. i have a nurse looking after her so she checks it every three times a day you know three to four times uh, a day and every time it but it, i think it was low she is better than right i mean as you get older that's why i said i mean you taking medicine is not going to be lifetime because uh, your blood pressure i mean as you get older some neurological diseases it can make your blood pressure like parkinson's disease your blood pressure can go low so um, it can tend it can tend to be i mean can make you go lower but if it is not giving her any symptom then we don't need to no actually yeah. what happened was Uh, one or two doctors told me after that she will not survive and surprisingly she survived and now she has gone yeah. back to almost normal level so yeah. i am more surprised she's with like that she is like a miracle only <laughs> so I'm especially sure she is a miracle a month yeah generally we will almost one and a half months yeah medically I mean if it is lower than uh, 70 systolic I mean lower than 40 diastolic it's very low blood pressure we have to give pump fluids and give pressure medicine those mean to increase the blood pressure not pressure to press our medicine we say for uh, the decreasing the Correct. so that's what we do yeah but uh, i think when uh, no we didn't so do we, that because uh, she's in a condition where we didn't wanted her yeah. to suffer yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's the reason we didn't do that but if she revived mm-hmm. that's, that's that was so something body uh, it's it's like a super computer right it's uh, everybody's body is so different so yeah. we cannot say that i mean uh, Uh, yeah so i know i she's probably you're just keeping her comfortable but uh, yeah we are yeah, yeah covered that is great yeah yeah it's it's a blessing we have yeah. few more days with her yeah thank you so much yeah okay if anybody has any questions you can ask now any more questions so you want to ask um Mr. Yes, you have to unmute yourself. Unmute sir. yourself, sir. I gave the request to ask to unmute. Just click unmute, and then you can ask. Question. 
or you can even post it in the chat box we can create it out sir i think he doesn't know how to unmute i think right who is that uh, uh, i am knr oh, okay okay yeah he's my chittappa only so i can answer oh, okay okay okay, okay. Yeah, fine. okay fine okay fine <laughs> then you talk with him fine fine okay <laughs> so he, she will directly tell you the answer <laughs> yeah okay fine okay thank okay. you thank you everyone uh, for joining us today uh, it's such a nice presentation you know with a very detailed information about uh, chronic diseases uh, i hope it was not too much but uh, i really like that everyone was uh, participating very uh, it's interactive I, i think everyone we always uh, have this interactive uh, people you know they keep uh, they they just not push uh, you know they push us as well so they don't make us stop somewhere so they they will say yeah go seek for something else and that's how we have been traveling also <laughs> Thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alita, for your you know like uh, such a nice presentation and for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Big, you. big applause you. for uh, Dr. Thank Alita you. and the growing young uh, professionals. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, you ma'am. Thank you, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for the wonderful session. Happy weekend, everyone. Meet you all Bye. on Monday. In next. Bye. 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 Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor uh, Sunanda Vijay. Welcome, Aunty. Welcome, Uncle. Bye. 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 Bye.